Since the start of the pandemic, we've heard comparisons between COVID-19 and the flu. And although COVID is far from an ordinary seasonal virus, some infectious disease experts are saying there are signs the virus is changing. Let's bring in Canada tonight's medical contributor, Dr. Samir Gupta. He's with us Tuesdays and Thursdays. Hi, Dr. Gupta. Good to see you. Hi, Janelle. So we know COVID has been far more deadly than the average flu, but, you know, as we've watched it evolve over the, over the last two years, uh, has has changed when it comes to making that comparison? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a great starting point to say that it has been far more impactful, far more deadly, and, and that's, that's sort of been a trope since the beginning of the pandemic, and people who were sort of minimizing or denying the pandemic were, it was always a talking point that this mm. is nothing more than a flu. Uh, and it's almost, you know, it's almost farcical. I mean, you can't even, a million Americans have died in two years. In the typical flu season, 30,000 people die. Uh, it's it's 15-fold. And that's despite all the public health restrictions that we put in place. And, and flu just went away with those public health restrictions. These are very different viruses. Uh, but what I, what I will say is happening over time, and that's through, you know, through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, is that we are becoming a more immune population, particularly Western countries that have had good access to vaccines through vaccination and through, to some extent, natural immunity. Our population is quite well protected, particularly from severe outcomes from infection, uh, to the point where about a month ago, there was a report from the UK suggesting that for the average person, the infection fatality rate, so your chances of dying if you get the infection, if you get SARS-CoV-2, novel coronavirus, versus if you get flu, your chances of dying for the average person are probably quite similar now. Mm. And that's sort of a milestone. And, and that's a reflection of the fact that we have a much more immune population. And it's, again, it's not everyone. It's for the average person with a good immune system. But still, having reached that point, what's important to recognize is that this is a much more contagious virus than the flu. So even if your chances of dying are the same for the individual person, many more people will catch it. So the burden on our population, the burden on our health systems is still going to be much greater. And the other point to put in there is about long-term symptoms. Many studies have looked at long-term symptoms, 12 weeks plus, in flu patients compared to COVID patients. And what they've identified is that 15 to 20% more people who had COVID will have those long-term symptoms. So another really important difference for us to think about. Okay. So a difference in terms of long-term symptoms, some similarities when it comes to death rates, difference in, in uh, uh, how contagious it is. Uh, what else can we, can we look at to, to compare the two? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we've been looking at is, is patterns, and, and we know that flu is very much a seasonal virus, and we've seen some extent, to some extent, this pattern with this new virus in the sense that it, it does seem to get worse in the colder months, and it gets better in the warmer months, and that may be a reflection simply of our behavior. We tend to congregate indoors in colder months. Um, there has been a lot of noise in the sense that we've had new variants that have called, caused spikes. We've also had changes in our public health restrictions that have caused spikes. But behind all that noise, there may be a seasonal pattern emerging. Um, that's to be determined. But if it does, uh, and there's some sign of that, uh, that would be a similarity with the flu. Hmm. And so we know that the flu also evolves and changes every year. Um, so what compares, how, how different is the evolution uh, of the COVID-19 virus uh, changing as we've seen it over the last few years and the way the flu evolves? Yeah, that's a great question. And it, it's been quite different, I'd say, up, up until recently. So you had, you know, the parent strain and then there was alpha and some parts of the world had beta. Um, we had Delta and then we got to Omicron and, and each of those evolved or developed quite independently. Um, you know, there were a set of very specific circumstances we think that led to the development of each of those variants and they had some advantages, some you call them evolutionary advantages, which allowed them to take over and in each case become dominant until the next one supplanted it. Um, but what's happened since, you know, November, December with Omicron is that you had Omicron BA1 then you got Omicron BA2. Now you have a subvariant of BA2, and then you're starting to get BA3, 4, and 5. But the idea here is that these are all subvariants. They're all sort of variations on a theme of Omicron. And we call that antigenic drift over time. And that's actually quite similar to what the flu does. It, it, it's a variation on a theme. It drifts over time. And that, to some extent, makes it easier to predict and, and model, and to some extent, makes it easier to match our annual boosters. So, this virus is starting to behave that way in the last few months, but the big caveat there is that we could just 
you know, have a new mutation that completely displaces Omicron and all of this goes right out. But I would say that this is one way in which recently it's been a bit more similar to the flu. Mm. To, to, to the point that you made when we started this chat is, is that people may look at, you know, this idea that COVID-19 is just like the flu and so we've got to live with it and, and I'll get it eventually and that's it. But I think the bottom line here is that there are still things that make it different, particularly the long-term effects that make you want to take some mitigating, you know, to, to, to take some uh, uh, precautions to do what you can to avoid getting it. Okay, I'll leave, it, th <laughs> I'll leave it there. That's uh, Canada Tonight's medical contributor, Dr. Samir Gupta. Good to see you. You too. Thank you.